Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. Quick review time. I have with me a special spinner, very unique spinner known as the Howler by Skiff Knives. Now this is not mine, this was on loan to me from my friend Yong Chiang and it's a very funny story. I was just hanging out with my girlfriend one day and we were at the train station and uh, we were heading down towards the train and then Yong Chiang just happened to walk past us and he was like, hey, I'm rushing off but uh, yeah, just hold on to this and then he just shoved it in my hand and I was like, what? It was really fast. It all happened in like a span of like half a minute. So anyway, I took it out of my pocket and it was in a pouch like he handed this to me in a little headphone pouch yeah it's really interesting and I've been fidgeting with it ever since and um, I'm just here to give you guys I guess a quick review on this because really I don't think it's available anymore so first of all I'm gonna talk about the buttons these are magnetic buttons as you guys can see it's very easy to pull it out not difficult like the Axis Micro for example but the buttons are really I think the champion of the entire spinner I don't know what kind of a finish this is in here it's some kind of a media blast finish. I don't know, but it feels so good. If I could just describe it, I would say that it is almost like it's 800 grit sandpaper that has been used. <laughs> That's my best way of describing it. Like, it feels so good. It's not rough, but then again, it's so grippy. I don't know how to explain it, guys. Look, I'm going to show you guys a close up look. See how it almost doesn't even reflect light at all. And it is not a sticker because that finish actually extends to this particular edge on the inside. There is a little chamfered edge on the inside of the button. I don't know if I can get it to show on camera, but that uh, right there, see that? So it's not even sharp at all. You know how some buttons actually have a raised lip and on the inside of the raised area, it's kind of like a sharp edge, but this one is so smooth. So I think that it was just put through some kind of a media blasting finish and then these were actually hand satin rubbed or hand rubbed satin if I'm getting my terms incorrect but this is like a hand rubbed finish. You get a very smooth very nice texture here and this I believe is machine finish on the sides. So these buttons very well made I would say. I'm not a huge fan of magnetic buttons but for this particular purpose it works very well and this is really the champion. I really love this. So moving on to the spinner itself you guys can see that it actually holds a shielded bearing and this is a one drop bearing. So that means super smooth guys, no sound whatsoever, feels really really good. Now the main frame of it is made of stainless steel and outside here, these howler heads or these wolf theme heads, these are anodized titanium. And the screws as well, these are Torx screws and they are T8, not T6 used by other spinners. These are T8 Torx screws. They have also been anodized and yes, they are titanium as well. So that is where the customizing options come in. You can choose to, or at that point of time, I should say, you were able to choose what material the main body would be, whether it's going to be brass or stainless steel. And one of the things that was listed on the Skiff sales page was that because of the property limitations of stainless steel, you're not able to get a lot of different colors on it, but titanium you can with electro anodizing. So that is why the offered that kind of option where you could actually choose what kind of colors that you wanted on the wolf heads and what kind of colors you wanted on the screws if you chose the titanium screws. Now you could also choose a cheaper option I suppose in terms of the screws and that would be the stainless steel screws but Yong Chiang went ahead and chose a very nice gold or yellowish gold tone for the screws and a very beautiful blue and it's so even all around. Look at that blue such a beautiful hue. So very quickly, I've gotten his permission and I'm going to undo one of the wolf heads on camera. I've never done this before, so let's just check this out together, shall we? Got myself a T8 Torx hex key and we're just gonna undo two of these Torx screws to remove one of the wolf heads. That's one. Ah, I see, it looks to have been locked tighted in. There we go. Second one out and it pops right off like that. See, I was right, it's red Loctite right there. So. The screws have been Loctited on and wow, look at that machining. This is precise. These edges here have been cut out so perfectly to fit just this. Wow. Okay, I'm thoroughly impressed with the precision on this. And you guys know, Skiff as a knife maker is well known in the scene and they make some really nice knives. So precision, definitely on point. Worksmanship, definitely on point. Now, since one of the wolf heads is off, I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit more about the spinner frame itself. You are actually given options of finishes as well. There is a tumble finish, if I'm not wrong. There is a media blasted finish, I think so, or sandblasted. And there is a hand rub satin finish. And this is the hand rub satin finish. Now, for hand rub satin finish, it is super labor intensive. And that's why you have to top up a little bit more. So I believe that this spinner in totality costs more than 99 USD. I don't know how much exactly. I don't think it's very nice of me to ask Yong Chiang, but 
just so you guys know, you're supposed to pay a little bit extra. So he went ahead and got the hand rub satin finish for the heads as well as the frame. So these these marks you see over here, if I'm not wrong on the website, they stated that they put it through a 400 grit sanding and then up to a 1000 grit. So that means that these straight lines are all just done by hand. So you got to imagine how precise it's got to be. Just going at it with sandpaper in a perfectly straight fashion that is just out of this world. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but I have. And let me tell you, it is not easy. No joke. And to do this on both sides, that's crazy. In terms of the workmanship and everything, it is wonderful. I'm not gonna contest that. So let me get the screws back in place and the buttons back on and let me talk about the fidgetability of this guy, okay? All right, I got everything back in place and this is what the spinner looks like when it is spinning. See that beautiful color? It's like a gold ring in the middle of a blue blur. And then right in the middle is just, just shiny and I, I don't know, it just really looks really, really good when it's spinning. One of the things that Skiff mentioned on their website is that they wanted to kind of marry the properties of stainless steel as well as titanium because you know, titanium, you could easily anodize it, but it is a little bit too light. For stainless steel, it is heavier and better to be used on spinners to get better spin times, but there's a limitation in terms of what they can do for the coloring of it. So that's why they actually have this whole spinner and believe that they've done a good job. But in terms of fidgeting, uh, Man, I gotta say, it's not a very nice fidgeter because the edges are all really hard edges. This right here is a hot spot. This right here is a hot spot. This right here is a hot spot. Inside here is okay, but if your finger is gonna rub against the inner edge of this steel area here, it's gonna be uncomfortable as well. So in terms of a fidgeter, this is not really good, but it spins very well. And mostly I would attribute that to the one drop bearing. It is an okay size, but in terms of the precision and the make of it, really, really some high quality stuff. That is my review on the Skiff Howler. If you are a collector, this is something that you don't want to pass up on. I don't know if they're ever going to open up pre-orders for any more of these. And at the same time, I've not seen these on the secondary market. But for $99 and up, even if it goes up to, I say, about $120, I think this would be a good piece to add to anyone's collections. These buttons, though, they really are something else. And I really give them mad props for the buttons. This is the first time I'm actually enjoying very plain looking buttons with plain designs. But that finish there is... It's just amazing and it's just got a perfect amount of grip for me, for me. And this is uh, not a very good fidgeter, although it is quite fun to fidget here and there with. But because of the sharp edges and everything, I'm not able to give it a good strong flick. Whether I'm performing a preloaded flick or a forward flick, pulling back or pushing forward with my index finger or my fourth finger here like that, not so much. And you can actually see it scraping off my skin all over. Yeah, I know Yongqiang, this is kind of disgusting, but yeah, see? just. This is actually sharper than the Spinatic Classic X and Y. Do I think this is worth the $99? Okay, I'm just gonna randomly put a price on this because of the hand rub satin finish. And I'm gonna say that this is about 125 USD. Now, do I think that 125 USD is worth this? For titanium, titanium, hand rub satin finish, stainless steel with these buttons and the precision in terms of the make of it, so-so. I think that the value is all right. It is not a fantastic deal, but it is not too expensive either. So really it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that really fidgets very well, then I will tell you, save your money and buy something else. But if you're looking for something that is really, really about showing off the precision in terms of its make, almost like any CKF spinner, you know what I mean? Like a Pepiaka. But this is something that I would put in that kind of range and in that kind of realm. And I would say that for $120, this is worth it. Now, the base price is $99, not $120, like I mentioned before. So it really depends on what kind of combination you are getting, what options you're getting as well. And that is all I have to say about this spinner. I just wanted to really let you guys know that this spinner exists. And if not for Yongqiang, I wouldn't even know that there is such a spinner out there in the market in the first place. So once again, a big thank you to Yongqiang. This is the Skiff Knives Howler. Links in the video description below because I'll be digging up links for you guys. And... Thank you so much for watching. That's about it, guys. I hope that I provided enough information to help you decide whether or not the Skiff Howler is a spinner for you. I think it's not bad for a collection piece, but it is not mine. Too bad. Thanks, everyone, and I'll catch you guys in the next slice of my life. Bye.